Welcome everyone. Welcome to the uh, fifth lecture of the webinar series entitled Towards Critical, Historical and Transnational Dialogues on Japanese Model of Education. My name is Keita Takayama. I'm a professor and a director for the Global Education Office, which uh, sits within the uh, Graduate School of Education at Kyoto University. Uh, today, uh, we are hosting a talk by Professor Yorok Wan Sun uh, from uh, Kyunghee University, uh, South Korea. Uh, I'm going to uh, formally introduce Professor Sun uh, later in the uh, introduction, but for now, uh, let me try to situate uh, today's talk within the a series of lectures that we have hosted up to this point. Uh, we have so far hosted, hosted uh, four lectures with the very first talk uh, in late July. That was when we kick-started the webinar. We have had one American and three uh, Japanese speakers, one literacy theorist slash uh, practitioner, and three historians who all look to the past as far back to the uh, pre-war period, the 1920s and 30s, and then to the uh, 1950s and 60s. The first speaker, uh, Dr. Mira Shimabukuro from uh, University of Washington, uh, talked about uh, diary writings of uh, Japanese Americans during the wartime internment slash uh, concentration camp, with a focus on the rhetoric rhetorical use of gaman and its implications for the subsequent redress movement in the 1980s. The second lecture uh, by Professor Satoko Hira of the National Museum of Japanese History examined the uh, Japanese colonial education in Taiwan and Korea with a particular focus on its continuities and discontinuities and before and after Japan's world defeat in 1945. The third speaker uh, Professor uh, Takeshi uh, Komagome, my colleague at the uh, Kyoto U here, took us to the post-war period, post-war Japan to the uh, 1950s and 60s, whereby a group of individuals associated with one publisher in Tokyo were trying to internationalize a unique writing pedagogy called Seikatsu Tsuzurikata, or daily life writing. Professor Komagome's illustration of the kind of challenges that they had to address in order to get the international collaborators to understand what the daily life writing was all about, gave us a glimpse into some of the unique features of its pedagogic ethos. And the last speaker we had uh, back in October Dr. Sachio Negawa of the International Research Institute of Japanese Culture. It took us back to the pre-war and wartime period whereby Japanese schools in Brazil were producing imperial subjects on the other side of the planet while at the same time being shaped by the nationalizing effort of Brazil at the time. So for the last uh, last four months or so, we have been, we have been sort of moving back and forth in time, like a time traveler from the pre-war, war time to post-war and then back to pre-war, while exp exploring the historical continuities and the discontinuities of the Japanese education practice and system. And from today's talk onward, however, we're leaving behind the distant past to talk about a more contemporary a more contemporary cases of a transnational movements of a Japanese educational ideas and practices. We have chosen Professor Sun to kickstart our look into the contemporary cases of Japanese education's international transfers. Um, I won't say too much at this point about his talk. I don't want to spoil it, but it will touch upon Manabu Sato's a theory of learning community. Manabu no Kyodo Tai. Uh, more specifically, 
how that notion has been embraced uh, by a group of progressive educators in Seoul. In fact, uh, Manabu Sato's work has been extremely influential, both in and outside Japan, often adopted by grassroots school reform efforts in Asia. Arguably, Manabu Sato is one of few theorists of, of pedagogy in Japan who has been deeply, deeply connected to the work of teachers and a bottom-up school reform effort. And he's very politically active, as many of us in Japan would know. Unfortunately, his international influence and legacy are not well recognized within Japan. So we very much look forward to learning from Professor Sun's talk today. I have known Professor Sun for nearly 15 years uh, since we were together uh, doing a PhD degree at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, United States. He was two to three years ahead of me. After completing his degree, he went back to Korea while I ended up going to Australia. Uh, fast forward in the clock to about eight years ago, Professor Sun invited me to give a talk at the uh, Korean Curriculum Association's meeting, as well as a uh, Korean Teachers Union's uh, Seoul City Branches gathering. It was at these meetings, but especially at the latter's, the Teachers Union's gathering, that I witnessed his impressive leadership skills. At the union gathering, he not only served as the MC, gave a talk and translated my talk, but also performed his own songs in front of the big audience. I quickly learned that it wasn't the first time he was singing for them. It was clear to me that the audience had known about his his music talent and enthusiastically embraced his singing. And indeed, his singing was exceptional. I had no doubt that was the most memorable and the most popular uh, part of the gathering. Definitely not my talk. Uh, several years after my visit to Korea, I had a pleasure of hosting his family in Australia during his sabbatical leave. Uh, Professor Sun is a former Dean of the Graduate School of Education at Kyungki University in Seoul. He earned PhD in Wisconsin in Critical Curriculum Studies. He's well published in Korea with his latest book published in 2018 titled Students Asleep in the Class, The Perspectives from Sociology of Curriculum. Was selected by the Ministry of Education for its highly commended list of books for that year, 2018. Uh, Professor Sun has also published, published numerous articles in English, which appeared in top international journals, including a Comparative Education, Curriculum Inquiry, and Oxford Review of Education. Beyond academia, Professor Sun is very politically active, getting deeply involved with the Teachers Union, an alternative school reform movement that he's going to talk about today, and also serving as the education advisor for the city of Seoul. It is an absolute honor to hold, host his talk today, and please welcome Professor Sun. Um, thank you, Keita, for um, introducing and the, you you know share a long time to in, explain who I am, and also I really uh, thanks. Uh, compliment for my the music. Actually, I uh, writing a song uh, which is related to education, life, and uh, the so, you know, society. So, um, but now today um, I'm you know talk, we'll talk more about education and the, the pedagogy. Um, I'm honored to have the opportunity to give a lecture today um, and to discuss my research topic with educators in Japan and South Korea. Today, I will look at the discourses on the school reform in Korea and Japan um, to examine how we understand East Asian style of education and how 
communitarian approach to school reform are used to overcommit. In particular, I will bring my lecture today focusing on how teachers in South Korea, um, called the Hyokshin, South Korean Innovative School, called the Hyokshin Schools, refers to Professor Sato Manabu's uh, community of learning. Before I begin my presentation, I would like to mention that this presentation is based on the study currently, currently being conducted with my co-author. Um, she is Professor Yumi Lee, uh, who is standing to speak at the seminar with the teachers in this picture. And we did a lot of research on Hyokshin schools and educational policies in global context. Uh, my presentation today will be based on uh, these researches that has been carried out and published over the, over the past decade. Um, now we um, look at the background of Hyokshin school movement. Um, the first of all, Hyokshin schools are on the shoulders of the true, true education called the Cham Kyo Yuk that Korean Teachers Union has developed. True education called um, True Education was a movement held in the late 1980s by progressive teachers to protest against, against military dictatorship and to promote social democracy, both in society and education. With great progress of democratization in Korea, the discourse on true education has decreased a lot, but the tradition of true education has led to Hyokshin School today. Um, as I will talk, talk about it a little bit later, um, with the advent of a progressive superintendent in South Korea, uh, Korean Teachers Union has led Hyokshin Schools uh, by cooperating with the superintendents and engaging in education policies. The picture on the left, um, left above, above left, um, is one where KTU, Korean Teachers Union, began its organization in 1989. This incident, the first to 1,500 teachers to be fired um, it's very hard to believe. It was unbelievable national violence. Um, and after democratization, they were all able to return to school. Back then, the teachers were at the front of the school democracy. Um, second, I'm gonna uh, mention a little bit about the, um, the Korean and Hyokshin School teachers looking at the Nordic welfare state education. As was the case in Japan, um, to my knowledge, there has been a lot of interest in Finnish education in, in, in Korea. Um, and the teachers of Hyokshin schools have referred to education in Northern European welfare state, such as Denmark, Sweden, as a model for Hyokshin schools. Especially these teachers tend to assume it is important to look at relationship between education and welfare state. Um, Professor Sato Manabu makes an interesting observation about the East Asian style education. Ed education in East Asia countries has been typified by high scores in international competitions, like uh, you know, uh, PISA tests, etc. But a low level of a student satisfaction with the education and rejection of a student participation in learning. Um, Sato terms it escaping from learning. The students in these countries are now radically escaping from learning and their schools are having mounting problems with instruction and discipline. 
This is what Professor Satomana um, have written in his book and his um, lectures. Among the symptoms of a disease are student lack of interest in academic affairs, despite high scores, classroom um, and uh, and classroom disorder, the bullying, and increasing number of student dropouts. Sato Manabu connects this dominant instructional style of whole class uniformity and the top-down administrative bureaucracy um, with the need for social efficacy as part of a development pattern of these countries. And he called, calls it compressed modernization. So he think this compressed modernization is closely linked to East Asian style of education. Um, some, of you, some of you may uh, uh, may not agree with his term East Asian style of education, but uh, we need to talk about it. What it means to be East Asian style of education. The books on the left are representative of two books of the many translations of, of books written by Sato Manabu in South Korea. Um, as I told you, um, this presentation is based on, I am now uh, analyzing data, which is uh, collected by my co-author Yumi Lee. Um, we um, divide research questions into three. The first one is we're gonna explore the way some Hyokshin school activists, like enthusiastic Hyokshin school teachers, make use of Sato Manabu's community of learning strategy to their practice. Um, today's, in today's presentation, when I talk like, uh, um, you know, the capital C, of capital L learning, the community of learning um, is what I me meant, the Sato Manabu's concept. The second, to discuss what uh, motivated the Hyokshin School act teachers to refer to um, learning community movement of Japan. Third, um, we're gonna discuss how teachers in Hyokshin School movement view the educational philosophy, viewpoints of pedagogy, and the strategies for school change presented by Sato Manabu. Um, owing, you know, due to the pandemic of COVID-19, um, we were not able to meet uh, teachers for obtaining like a uh, interview. So instead, Instead, we ask them written interviews. So that interviews um, was conducted in September, uh, like a couple of months ago. And we uh, select um, 20 teachers. Um, many of them are also working for Hyokshin schools, 13 high school teachers and the seven middle school teachers. Um, we are focusing on secondary school because Sato Manabu's community of learning um, having, have influence on the middle school rather than elementary school. Uh, and we um, select the teachers among who, among teachers who have engaged in community of learning. Um, and, you know, as a trained, we, as a trained scholars, um, we, analyzed the data, uh, typical qualitative research method, like uh, what is called initial focused and the theoretical coding. Okay, before jumping to the, the analysis, the results of analysis, I'm gonna give you some sense of Hyokshin School. I think the definition of Hyokshin School is very um, important. Well, the, um, there is a slightly different versions of a definition in different province and the uh, school's name is a little bit different, but um, usually we uh, you know, call them Hyokshin school as a whole. 
Hyokshin schools refers to a role model school, role model for uh, school innovation, creating a new school culture based on collaborative atmosphere, like a cooperative school ethos, um, student rights, um, democratic decision making by teachers. To obtain the status of this school, uh, there are two conditions must be satisfied. The first, if we want to uh, get a status, status of Hyokshin school, uh, more than half of the teachers at your school have to agree to apply for it. And the school board must be approved this decision. Second, a school requires a authorization of their proposal by province of education, but it is not that much competitive. Um, you know, agreement in your school is most important. Once um, many, you know, more than half and most of the teachers agree to do, um, I don't think there will be any problem to get a status. Um, the status allow, allows the school to receive annual sub subsidies and grants. Uh, and they are allowed to um, have autonomy, relative autonomy from the usual top-down administration. In turn, uh, they, there are several requirements uh, school must follow. Uh, usually we um, suggest three things. The first one is the promoting collaborative learning, where sometimes we call it um, excellence for every, every older student, every student, I mean. Uh, second, listening to teachers' voice. Um, third, building a teacher's learning community. Um, please look at the, uh, the infogram, the left side. Um, if you, this is a curriculum, uh, classroom, like an instruction and evaluation. So um, this is uh, like a very rep representative symbols to signify uh, what Hyokshin School have to do. So um, it is very important to know there are three, the curriculum, instruction, and evaluation uh, located the, at the center. Um, this is uh, uh, school management, um, student guidance, and collaboration with the local community, and student well-being or the welfare. Uh, this is, this uh, they are six basic areas and the requirements for participating schools. Um, this is also evident in the definition of Hyokshin School as a leading school that uh, creates a responsible community of learning and caring through democratic participation and collaboration. This is a whole school approach. Uh, this school project views the entire pedagogical process as connected on the shared vision in and around the school. Um, the first, the curriculum, uh, school that develop whole person and the democratic citizenship. Second, the classroom teaching, exciting schools, making exciting schools where students learn and grow together through participation and the inclusion. Third, assessment, schools that assess the process of growth, development rather than competition or like um, rigorous uh, the measures based on a multiple choice tests. The making of building the cooperative school culture is the fourth. Um, student guidance and the discipline. Peaceful schools that respect uh, student rights and the voices and prohibit corporal punishment. Um, we do not have any corporal punishment in uh, school now, but um, a decade ago, uh, corporal punishment uh, is, is things that we you know, easily see when you visit Korean public schools. The student well-being and the cooperation with the local community is also important as a one uh, crucial element of six basic areas. 
Okay, this is a two interesting graphics. Um, look at left side. Um, let's take a brief look at historical and the political backgrounds of innovative school, action school. If there, um, I mean, this school is very closely related to South Korean politics, um, direct election system. Um, we uh, introduced that direct election system for superintendents in 2009. Um, if there were no direct election system for superintendents in Korea, would there be an Hyokshin school? Well, I don't think so. In other words, the direct election of superintendents enabled the inst institutionalization institutionalization of Hyokshin school. Um, it's no exaggeration to say that. Um, I want to uh, give an emphasis on the fact that this policy is related to the introduction of a direct election of a superintendent, um, which, ma which made it possible for uh, newly elected progressive superintendents. Uh, we call Jimbo, Jimbo superintendents to initiate the Hyokshin school. Um, so uh, please look at this graph. Um, this is rapid growth in the number. Um, it's quite uh, surprising to see um, now 13, the 13% 13 of who South Korean schools belong to this, this category, which means um, 13 schools, one three school, out of 100 schools are uh, Hyokshin schools. It's a huge numbers. Um, in two, so, 2017, 2017, the government under the leadership of President Moon Jae-in um, spread Hyokshin school across the nation. Um, the number of DJ school has increased every year. Um, as I told you, now, 13% of South Korean, uh, you know, Hyokshin school. Uh, this rapid diffusion creates concern that um, integrity will be diminished, but at the same time proves its uh, importance. So uh, we are now talking about the dilemma, we are discussing about the dilemma of expansion and the beacon effect. Uh, the um, This, this, this graph, uh, ju I just uh, selected this infographic to get you some sense. Uh, the, the blue one, the progressive superintendents um, have been elected uh, with, you know, there are only two exceptions or two regions. Uh, now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I want to share with you um, the common principles of a Hyokshin school. Um, I think it is important to review the discourses of networks for the new schools um, in that this network has played a crucial role in the spread of Hyokshin schools. Um, this is a, a Nam Han San Elementary School uh, very well known as the origin of Hyokshin school. This school is located in rural area where many parents want to leave the village to look for better condition of ed education for their children. But this school as a part of the networks for the small school or network for new school later, uh, developed the initial model of a school reform and got a lot of media attention for their enthusiastic practice. Uh, this group's common principle of Hyokshin School show very well the philosophy and the direction of Hyokshin School. So it is very important to know uh, Hyokshin School was the first originated from rural area um, elementary school. So um, uh, you know, Hyokshin School is something that, um, you know, it started from bottom up uh, leadership, but now it is in, in, institutionalized when Hyokshin School meet with 
progressive superintendent. So now it is a little bit top down. So um, uh, it is the middle ground from the top down and bottom up. It's a very um, unique system of the Hyokshin School. Uh, now, I really like to share with you that uh, Hyokshin School has been uh, receiving a lot of a spotlight from the media, especially on TV. Um, of course, we could see in the media uh, the opposition to Hyokshin School too. Uh, but there are much more broadcasts, uh, much more media broadcasted as, as a hope for the future, future of a Korean school. Um, I'm going to show you a video clip out of a TV documentary. Uh, there is no sound here in the Zoom, uh, but there are a lot of information you want to get. Um, this school is well known for its application Sato Manabu's community of learning. Um, this is what you see in the screen. They um, moved to their you know, the desk for the collaborative learning. Um, I should be very careful to say uh, this famous school adopted co you know, community of learning as a model of their schools, because some of the teachers in the school um, might want to say, Hyokshin school are much more than that, much more than community of learning, uh, because you know, the community of learning is a part of Hyokshin school uh, that includes many other crucial elements more than classroom teaching innovation. But I think no doubt the community of learning has clearly been helpful and influenced to change the culture and the real practices of a school change. Um, the, you know, changes in classroom space and the layout are also important medium. It's a very important medium for school changes in Hyokshin schools. The seating arrangement in the traditional classroom were all the desk facing the blackboard, the students were passive, you know, starting, uh, staring straight at the blackboard and the teacher without the dialogue, accept, accepting the knowledge the teacher delivers. Um, however, many the teachers in Hyokshin School no longer use like a row seating and instead they uh, chose like a U shape seating you know, U-shape um, in a lecture and cluster sitting in small group activities arrangement. Uh, this is used uh, as a main strategy for increasing sense of classroom belongings. The sitting arrangement is much more than strategy to enhance classroom, uh, you know, effectiveness. Uh, this is, um, uh, one, exam one example that the Hyokshin School uh, is influenced by Sato Manabu. Um, now, um, what change have Hyokshin School made in South Korean public education over the past decade? Um, the first thing among the change is that Hyokshin School teachers um, wrote many books based on their successful school change experience um, and made a big change in Korean publishing market. Isn't that interesting enough? Yeah, I think that this is very um, interesting uh, in a phenomenon because before the period of Hyokshin School, um, I think the professors and educational research, researchers, experts um, leading you know, educational book markets, but um, uh, Hyokshin School movement changes in you know, a professional learning, how to distribute this learning, you know, who owned the knowledge. So there are a lot of changes in um, educational knowledge uh, for school changes. It's a very important. I really um, highlight this in my presentation. Uh, second, uh, many teachers in Hyokshin School have offered the student um, with activities such as sports, art, 
musicals and the clubs. Teachers emphasize the importance the students run these activities they own their own on their own leadership. If a new school is designated as a Hyokshin school, um, a school song and many new symbols are needed. Interestingly, the students write their own lyrics and include a spirit of a Hyokshin school. Um, you want to look at the, you know, above and the left, there is um, uh, the lyrics and the, uh, the um, I mean, there, there is a school song which the written by student themselves. Um, collaborative rule making is one of the most important features of a Hyokshin school. In the process of a collaborative rule making, uh, teachers promote student voice by encouraging them to address the issues like a hairstyle, uniform, and cell phones. Uh, you know, they have disagreements among students, teachers, and parents. So by virtue of a collaborative rulemaking, teachers eased their conflict with the student. Many teachers in Hyokshin School wanted to stay away from the hardship of getting into conflict with the students when using like a penalty point system as disciplinary uh, strategies. So um, teacher-student relationship of a trust, trust gained by this process, and uh, it is very help, you know, helpful to encourage students to participate in uh, learning, you know, um, not, on, in, not to mention discipline. So um, the picture on this slide, um, there are students, um, the teachers, parents, uh, you know, the sign and the swear school regulation they collaboratively made. This is quite a common scene you can see when you're visiting Hyokshin School in South Korea. It's, it's very interesting, uh, very uh, crucial element of you know, identity building in Hyokshin schools. Um, now we will see the picture on the slide. What do you think happens in this photo? A newspaper uh, the featured this article uh, with the title of Movie Like Farewells. Students at Hyokshin school um, went out to the playground while a few of them grabbed, grabbed to take the hands of a principal who had to leave school to another one and went, went up to rooftop together. Uh, at the same time, the remaining 700 students and the teachers um, on the ground presented her with a huge human heart. Do you think this can happen just by um, letting students to do it? or by asking them to do? I don't think so. I think this phenomenon is uh, effect of Hyokshin school, which is like a you know, culture is embedded in uh, teachers and students' mind for a long time. This is a latent the curriculum. Um, and it is, um, you know, it is related to uh, being a way of physical punishment cultures. Teachers who want to improve school thought, um, you know, usually think it embracing to still have a physical punishment and the school gate inspection in industrialized country like South Korea. Um, enthusiastic teachers wanted to go beyond abolition of a corporal punishment and inspection. Uh, they suggest to cultivate more ethical climate of school cultures. Um, as I mentioned a little bit, this is a latent or hidden curriculum of school. Um, you know, ethical ethos or environment is very important to uh, you know, bring, bring up our students to, to the future citizens. 
Um, among the culture of South Korean secondary schools, there is um, a distinctive features called the school gate guidance. Actually, um, it is a school gate inspection. To my knowledge, uh, the Japan has very the similar the cultures uh, in terms of school gate inspections. Um, every morning, teachers um, of student guide guidance department examine each student entering school in front of school gate. Uh, teachers inspect students to ensure if they are following the rules and punish them if they don't in accordance with school regulation. At the school gate, the teachers check student to uh, length and the hair, color of hair, mode of dress in school uniforms, name tag, badges, um, identifying whether, I mean, teachers like a check whether students are late for school um, and um, But um, you know, the, the school is the place where students spend the longest hour, uh, except at home. So, um, but without in this, you know, the warm culture to respect the student, um, you know, in, in every morning, um, the, when students meet with this kind of um, school gate inspection. Um, it is very difficult to think students start with their learning, their first to, uh, you know, start their learning in the morning. Um, so I think the, um, the learning is strongly related to the, uh, you know, school gate inspection. They feel the control and they uh, may feel, you know, this control, um, I, I mean, school is not for them. The school is placed to control their every, you know, uh, the hairstyle and, uh, you know, everything about uh, their details. Collaborative rulemaking is a key strategy in the Hyokusen School movement. It is closely related to uh, broader social issues of the ordinance of school rights uh, that um, most of the progress of superintendents have implemented. So if you are really interested in Hyokshin School, um, you know, you might want to uh, the Google or um, you might want to the find more materials, uh, articles on the ordinance of a student right in South Korea. Um, the Seoul Metropolitan Council uh, in 2012 passed the, passed the ordinance that was um, originally developed by superintendents of Seoul Metropolitan Office of Education. It included the um, abolition of a corporal punishment and inspection of belongings, student freedom of assembly, um, a ban or discrimination against homosexuals, tolerance in hairstyles, the flexibility in school dress code. Um, however, um, as you might expect, this attempt to have been faced with a trem tremendous opposition. Uh, then, Hyokshin School, the focus on student interest and to provide many practical opportunities for them to plan and the deal with the task for themselves. So um, Hyokshin School really promote the student autonomy activities um, with, within the school curriculum and you know, after school. Uh, it is a part of, part of such efforts. Um, so entire student body often gather together as you, uh, as you see in the picture, share opinions to experience direct democracy. Uh, this is a very typical method used in Hyokshin School is to have all students present their opinions, uh, usually by putting post-it um, on board 
on a given agenda, uh, then reduce them, uh, reduce different ideas to a uh, few alternatives, and finally select the final decision through, through vote and other method. Um, so, you know, I think this uh, a photo on screen uh, will representing what Hyokshin School means for. Um, this is another interesting photos. There are many people in Korea who oppose Hyokshin School even if they are um, a very effective way to reform schools. What if the parents object, especially when the education officer tries to, tries to um, de designate a particular school as a Hyokshin school? This photo shows the parents of that school strongly opposing, opposing it, um, which has drawn media attention and sparked a huge debate. Hyokshin schools want better education, but the parents are against better education. What a difficult dilemma it is. I will be back to these issues later uh, during today's dis discussion. Now, um, I, we have a look at South Korean Hyokshin school. I have spent relatively a long time explaining this concept to you because um, it would be very unfamiliar with you. Now let's look at what South Korean teachers think community of learning um, has affected to their practice. Uh, to find out, I, I with my co-author Yumi, asked the six questions here to 20 teachers. Um, we um, asked them, uh, these questions. Um, um, we, I just wanted to, um, what, are, what are ways that Korean Hyokshin schools are embracing and um, utilizing Sato Manabu's community of learning? And um, uh, what do you think of Professor Sato Manabu's philosophy of education? his perspectives on students and the teachers and the strategy of changing schools and the classroom teaching. And what are similarity or difference between uh, Hyokshin schools and the community of learning? Um, and I asked them why you uh, come to know um, community of learning and made the decision to introduce to your practice. Um, now I'm going to show you, uh, you know, the direct excerpt from the teachers from the interview data, rather than uh, giving, you know, a secondhand interpretation uh, by me. Uh, I think this is a more the vivid data uh, you might want to see. Um, as a result of analyzing the given qualitative data, uh, we found the three main facts. Uh, from now on, I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you uh, uh, the excerpt of the interview data and explain how they perceive a community of learning. The first one, the first characteristic we draw is a philosophy, is that philosophy matters. The philosophy is very important to borrow or refer to uh, Sato Manabu's community of learning. Um, I'm going to read what teacher three said. Uh, what's great about Professor Sato is the reason he started the community of learning was because he, whose parents are victims of the bombing, um, thought about how to create a society that would never go through war again. Um, I didn't check you know, the um, Sato Manabu's parents are really victims of the bombing in Second World War. Um, I don't, but I don't think it's important. Um, the important is the way um, the teachers are really, um, are they, they, uh, they know a lot about Sato Manabu's. Uh, you know, they read a lot of books 
by him, uh, written by him. Uh, so uh, they knew uh, the detailed knowledge of uh, his parents are victim of the, the bombing, uh, which is very important because it is related to democratic society. Um, Sato uh, does not want to go through war again. Japanese society should become a democratic society. Um, and if Japanese society wants to become a democratic society, students should learn democracy as a life at school. It's a very um, important excerpt. Um, the other example that shows that philosophy matters. Um, recently, I have often come to the idea that the true learning uh, begins in a democratic classroom. And I'm convinced that beginning of a democratic classroom uh, can be done through careful listening. Careful listening is a very important element of Sato Manabu's community of learning. Um, but uh, more, more crucial thing is learning community allow us to expect to change classes, change schools, and ultimately change society. Um, I, I, may, I might interpret this, the reason uh, some South Korean Chokshin schools uh, refers to, refer to Satun Manabu uh, is because they think um, the philosophy matters, which means, you know, learning community allow us to um, change the classes and student learning is eventually related to change the society. Uh, second characteristics we draw is um, something about effectiveness. Teacher Seven said, um, when I first started Hyokshin School, I worked as Hyokshin manager, Bucho in Japanese. I just learned uh, from the interpreter a little bit before. Um, now, I have moved to new school. Here I persuade my fellow teachers, um, started another Hyokshin school. Um, when we are doing this, strategy of changing a school, school from classroom teaching uh, is very effective because teachers are all interested in and want to do well uh, in the classroom. So this approach is you know, uh, quite effective approach to teachers. Though this is the way teachers really feel about you know, community of learning. Um, I think uh, uh, this excerpt the show the well uh, about effectiveness. Uh, teacher Sotin said the advantage of a community of learning is that it provides a framework for open class lesson study and the peer observation. Um, in the community of learning, when observing classes, Teacher observers do not see teaching skills of teachers in class, but how well the student learn. So, um, um, you know, as the grow as the growth of Hyokshin School, you know, this image is very common to the Hyokshin School teachers um, in the open class. The observing teachers. Just the looking at, I mean, making observation of a student, uh, you know, their individual growth, how they the feel, you know, uh, the difficulty, how they participate. Uh, is their participation like authentic? Um, is our student feel safe to, um, you know, um, talk about their opinion. Um, is is a student have is a student has like a belongingness in the classroom. So um, I think this is the most important um, contribution that um, Sato Manabu's community of learning um, influenced the school innovation uh, strategies. Um, third. Uh, third, the characteristics um, you, me, and I draw from the data 
is similarity of educational problems. Um, I'm going to introduce teacher 19, what teacher 19 said. Um, secondary school teachers usually focus one-sided delivery in classes because they never take a step away from emphasizing the importance of entrance exam. Um, the, on the other hand, the community of learning, uh, the value each child aim for learning and the connect the children with life rather than cramming them. Um, because the because this strategy worked on the children, um, so you know, teacher nineteen think this strategy has expanded widely. Um, so, uh, well, this excerpt the show the effectiveness of school change strategy, but also, um, you know, the the teachers in South Korea refers to school reform movement from Japan because uh, the way they feel this is effective is uh, correlated to similarity of educational problems. So, you know, similarity of educational problems uh, grab their attention to how to solve this problem from the, uh, the you know, lesson from Japan. Teacher six, he said the biggest problem of Korean public education was the uniform style classroom teaching. This is, uh, uh, you know, this is about Asian style of education. Um, as I mentioned a little bit, some of you do not agree the way we are um, defining East Asian style education, but um, uh, interview data, uh, in, from the interview data, uh, I was able to interpret um, uniform the style of education uh, is problematic to these teachers and is causing uh, causing their motive and uh, promoting their promoting their motives to uh, Sato Manabu's community of learning. Um, perception of a commonality beside uh, these three beside the previous three characteristics. Um, that I draw with my co-author. Um, I, ad in addition to them, I ask them how they perceive commonality between Hyokushin School and learning uh, in a community of learning in Japan. Um, public goods, democracy, excellence for all, which are philosophical foundation of community of learning, can also be found in South Korea's Hyokushin School. Uh, movement. Um, in particular, Hyokshin School activists are determined to continue their desire to achieve social reform through restoration of a public good, goods of education through innovation of a teaching at school side. Um, what is most interesting to me when I analyze the data, uh, the philosophy, the term philosophy is very common uh, key words. It's a frequently used, you know, philosophy is the vocabulary, uh, is frequently used. Uh, so, you know, philosophy matters in the, uh, the trade of ideas for school reform in Japan and South Korea. Perception of difference. Um, well, um, these 20 teachers are deeply involved in community of learning uh, among uh, you know, Hyokshin school movements. So um, uh, you might think these the teachers are uh, not everyone, but most of the teachers are members in community of learning. Um, uh, one, one aspect we need, you know, we need to know is uh, uh, Sato Manabu's PhD stu student, uh, who is, her name is Son Woojong, Woojong Son. Uh, she, uh, she has led the group of community of learning by Sato Manabu in South Korea. So these teachers are member of that group. So they are deeply involved in uh, this uh, community of learning. I think uh, many of them have visited the, 
in Japan. So they are very well known about it. Uh, teacher 11 is one of them. The biggest difference can be found in the principal's role and the teacher's attitude. The first of all, uh, at the community of learning in Japan, it was the, the principal who proposed and led it for innovation in teaching. However, the leadership of the learning community in Korea was mainly played by teachers. In many cases, the principal cooperate uh, by wait and see or passively. Well, I think that excerpt, uh, you know, tells the many things. So uh, it is open to interpretation. One interpretation might be the way in Japan, community of learning um, led by like a, a principal or sometimes top down. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. So uh, just to let me know if I have uh, uh, you know, the wrong information or I think a little bit differently from, uh, from your ones. But um, in, in South Korean teachers who have known very well in community of learning in Japan, they think um, in South Korea, uh, in Hyokshin schools, this is applied in a way of like a bottom up. Uh, but um, in Japan, the principal um, tended to have a leadership in applying it in the, uh, in the each schools. Um, the second perception of a difference, um, the teacher, the 15, what is, what teacher 15 said, it, you know, sounds very interesting. Whether in Hyokshin school or in the community of learning, the philosophy and the goals are same. However, I think in Japan, the role of educational authority and the school principal is greater than that of Korea. In comparison, Chokshin schools in Korea were built from the below and they spread out another school. And I felt that progressive spirit, spirit of bringing about change in society as a who through education was stronger than that of Japan. Um, we, as we went through the, um, the background of Hyokshin School, um, you know, progress of a superintendent or the election of a superintendent is very, very important in promoting Hyokshin School. So, um, uh, and, uh, you know, KT, Korean Teachers Union um, deeply collaborate with the you know, progress of a superintendent in promoting Hyokshin School and spreading out them. So I think the, um, some of Korean Hyokshin school uh, teachers think Hyokshin school is much more democratic uh, than community of learning. Well, um, when I read the Satu Manabu's books, um, he really give emphasis on democracy. So, um, you know, it, it will be a controversial um, if the Hyokshin school is more democratic in spirit than uh, the community of learning, but um, later, but you know, we need, well, we might want to compare to uh, school movement in theory and practice later on. The, this, you know, uh, this is uh, the final uh, pages that I brought to today uh, discussion. The first one is motives of reference. Um, you, you, me, and I uh, draw three characteristics um, in motives of reference or borrowing or you know, drawing lessons um, from uh, you know, the um, educational movement uh, from another country or another jurisdictions. Uh, the first one is educational philosophy. Philosophy is very important. This is, uh, uh, you know, not a lesson drawing at the national level. This is, uh, you know, a collaboration and lesson drawing uh, between the teachers level, bottom of movement. So uh, I think in that level, educational philosophy uh, is thought of very important to, to think collaborate between two countries. Um, similarity of educational problems and effectiveness is another 
uh, important factors in uh, this communication. Um, I think the effectiveness is very important. Um, when I uh, analyze the data, um, many Hakushin school teachers who deeply involved in community of learning found out uh, it is very effective to change uh, school because they started with uh, you know, change in classroom teaching. The classroom teaching is always crucial uh, things, crucial interest for teachers because they always want to satisfy with the cl their classroom. Um, and then, you know, when absorbing uh, the lesson, open lesson, um, rather than, you know, evaluating or making a judgment on teachers who deliver the class, um, they are absorbing every student's growth. Um, if they are really engaged in classroom, they're engaged in their uh, tasks. If they are really satisfied with their the learning, if they are really um, in the they are in the track of the growth, so I think the effectiveness is very uh, imp important element in this process. Um, the second, um, I really want to point out the contradiction is very important. Um, um, I think it is very important to know, you know, the Hyokshin school's identity is always being constructed. Um, you know, the, some teachers appropriate the effectiveness of community learning, while some other teachers um, have given emphasis on like a relationship between education and the welfare state. They are looking at the Finnish education, you know, the Danish education, Swedish education, because they are part of a welfare state. Um, the other student, the other teachers are, the, the other teachers in Hyokshin school um, have looked at like a Bigatskian um, pedagogical theory because, you know, uh, the social constructivists have focused on collaborative learning, and the learning is constructed by society. So um, as a progressive teachers, they are uh, really interested in the relationship, the individual and the society. So in this tradition, contradiction is very important because in Marxian or Marxist tradition of Vygotsky, Vygotskyan, you know, learning theory. Um, the contradiction is the uh, the source for uh, like a development. So teachers look to at contradiction of like a student rights, like a, you know, a classroom. I mean, student alienation in classroom, um, you know, corporal punishment. They are all look at those are contradiction for better. I mean, against better um, education. So if you don't feel any contradiction in your, your school, um, we are not able to expect any um, motives to change. So, um, uh, you know, contradiction is very important to, uh, for teachers to get started with school changes. So um, uh, recently I am um, focusing on the concept of a contradiction as a starting point for school change, uh, which is always related to school de you know, social democracy. Um, I'm gonna move on the next to, um, you know, the theme, which I call discussion without nationality, um, you know, uh, we need a collaboration and a dialogue among East Asian educators, uh, not to mention Japan and the South Korea. Um, in East Asian countries, they share their, uh, you know, um, strength, their strength and uh, the fitful, uh, fitful. Um, and we have, a, you know, we are very common in having 
um, some sort of educational problems and educational strength. So um, uh, we have to be careful not to reduce um, the meaning of stage and education to a fixed identity, uh, but um, uh, there are a lot of commonality between us. So we, our discussion uh, should be uh, you know, shared without nationality because as a Korean educators, I really uh, care about you know, uh, children and adolescents in Japan, in China, and Singapore. So um, East Asian educators um, you know, have to meet often have a dialogue or you know, we have to learn each other uh, and help each other. Um, and I think the um, Hyokshin School is part of education for social democracy. Uh, without the democracy, I think any effort for school change, uh, school change can succeed. So, um, you know, we always uh, keep in mind Educational change is for the social, you know, you know democracy in society, and um, the the pictures um, the left we uh, studied uh, research on Hyokshin School with the Boston College in United uh, in U.S. Uh, the team, uh, with the team uh, who have re have written about the, the fourth way. Um, so um, I, you know, I just uh, share this information because, um, you know, we have to uh, you know, the perform the research between Japan and Korea, like a collaborative, collaborative research. So um, today's um, presentation uh, would contribute to um, get a starting point for, uh, you know, collaborative research on school change later on. Okay, um, thank you for um, listening to uh, my uh, lecture for a long time. And then um, if you have any other questions, um, I really have to you know, keep this dialogue.